All right, guys, well, I hope you had a really good weekend. I know my wife and I did. As you can see, I'm talking to you from a completely different place than I normally am. I'm in Anna Maria Island. It's on the west coast of Florida uh, in the, on the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, if you don't know where it's at, you should look it up on Google Maps. If you ever find yourself in uh, central Florida and you want to know of where one of the nicest uh, places to go as far as beaches are concerned is, uh, it's Anna Maria Island. The nice, white, soft, sandy beaches. Uh, a lot of times emerald green water, much like you see in this picture in the back. This is actually a painting, it's not a photograph, even though it kind of looks like it. Uh, but this is a very, um, a very close depiction of what you might see around here, this kind of environment, with the exception of the, the hills in the background here. I don't think you'll see too much of that. So I don't know where this is at, but that's a pretty good likeness, you know, at least the water and the, the, the white sand here and whatnot. So and Anna Maria Island is very nice. It's very, very sweet. So uh, the reason why we're here is because uh, through my wife's workplace, she was able to take a charter fishing trip. Um, about a six hour uh, fishing trip. I'm not much of a fisherman myself. Uh, it's not something I enjoy, but I would do it if I was asked. Um, I wasn't invited because I don't work for them. So she's able to go with one of her coworkers. And um, we decided we'd make this an overnight, an overnight trip instead of coming down first thing early in the morning. And uh, that way we could relax and just enjoy our time. Um, yeah, she's, uh, she's used to growing up around a father who loves to fish. Uh, he has, he's always had his own boat, so she spent a lot of time out in the bay herself, on the boat, in the water, uh, fishing, and uh, she's, that's something she's always liked doing. She finds it relaxing. I don't, but she does. So anyway, I'm here at the hotel, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that and then uh, share with you what's on my mind as far as food for thought goes. So uh, uh, where I'm at is the Compass Margaritaville Hotel. Now we looked around quite a bit for a hotel to stay at, like you like you normally would if you're gonna if you're gonna spend some money, and um, and we found this. Now we we originally thought we were gonna get a more expensive hotel room that was kind of like a resort, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money because of just spending one night. Uh, so we got something in the median range. This is not real expensive. It's not real cheap. It's just like kind of in that sweet spot, and uh, and you certainly get what you pay for and more compared to a lot of hotels. Uh, Compass Margaritaville, I'm assuming is owned by Jimmy Buffett. I didn't ask, but I think it's a safe assumption because everything's very Jimmy Buffett-like around here. And uh, you walk in the door and there's a big compass, a beautiful compass on the floor that you walk over and it's just really nice. And as soon as you come in the front doors, you know that you're in for an experience. And this is what I think is unique about this hotel. Well, it, op it opened up back in July this year, so it's fairly new. Everything's still immaculate, so clean. Uh, the cleanest hotel I've ever been in. And uh, the, uh, all the colors pop, everything looks very island-like. So it, uh, you feel like that's, you've got, you're living in an island experience when you come to this hotel. And uh, the, the decor, the amenities, everything is just beautiful. And then when you go outside, you have, um, you, it sits right on a marina. So there's all these big and small boats, even yachts and the commercial fishing boat that are going in and out all day long. And they have a nice bar. And so you can sit there and either inside or outside, you can watch these boats go in and out all day. The fish are popping up out of the water constantly. Manatees surface and come real close. You can see them out in the water. Somebody even said they saw a four foot shark. And uh, so we spent almost all day, uh, well, the remaining part of the afternoon and into the evening out by the water at the restaurant called Floor Days. It's right next to it, uh, drinking and eating and just enjoying ourselves, watching a football game, listening to, the, uh, listening to music. And it was just a lot of fun. It was a, it was a great time. So uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck here. Uh, I, I like it a lot. So if you're ever in the area, check out, check out Compass Margaritaville. Apparently, there's a lot of these around the United States. I haven't looked for that myself, but the person, one of the people who worked here told me that there's this, uh, there was, but this actually ranks number one in customer service. So it's, it's really nice. They, even on the sheets here, um, they have compasses all over it. And, uh, and the, the whole place is really cool. I mean, you, you gotta see it, it's pretty nice. I'll come back, I'll definitely come back here. Um, I don't know how often, but uh, 
I would I would definitely come back here, even just to stay here. So the and the breakfast the breakfast here is not like it is a lot of at a lot of hotels where you come down and get bagel and stale Cheerios and and uh, and and you know almost rotten bananas. This place has a uh, a really nice uh, breakfast buffet, and they serve you, and and it's part of your it's part of staying here, you know, and uh, it's, it's it's the best breakfast I've ever seen at a hotel, and. Uh, they even give you like ten dollars off the bar when you first come in the door, and uh, which I forgot to use because we walked outside. We actually went to the restaurant next door that had a bar. Uh, we, came, we got back to our hotel room and, and realized that we we left our our ten dollar credit here. But anyway, whatever, no big deal. We had a lot of fun when I was at the restaurant. I got uh, shrimp and scallop skewers because I don't eat seafood very often. I figure if I'm going to be by the water, then I'm going to I'm going to um, eat seafood. So we sat there, watched the fish popping out of the water, watched the boats go in and out, watched the sun set, and my wife was tickled pink. You know, she just, she loves that kind of thing. So that all works out for me. Anyway, uh, back in the hotel room, they had, in a lot of hotel rooms have this now, but they had a Keurig machine. I'm not much of a coffee drinker. Actually, I'm not a coffee drinker at all. Let me just put it that way. But I thought, why not? I'll try it. You know, I'll do it. And uh, I, they had this, these Margaritaville, uh, things here. Calypso coconut is what this is. I don't really taste a lot of coconut in this, but maybe you're not supposed to. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I, you know, what kind of opinion could I have about this? So it is good. Maybe I'll have to start doing this. Hmm. So I'm enjoying my time immensely here. A lot to see, a lot to do. It's just, it's just fun. It's a very, it's the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in. Enough about that, right? Um, what else do I want to tell you? Okay, so since I'm on the water and I get to watch these ships come in and out, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, give you food for thought today and include a quote that actually has um, a little bit of talk about ships. And uh, there's uh, kind of an allegory here. So listen carefully. This is by William George Jordan. He's one of my favorite writers ever. I don't know. I don't think he really wrote novels, uh, but he he was like an editor and a and, a, and and an author and whatnot. But he just wrote really good stuff. He died back in the early 20th century, and uh, but everything he says is quotable. So listen to this very carefully. Listen. It is a greater mistake to err in purpose, in aim, in principle, than in our method of attaining them. The method may readily uh, may readily be modified. To change the purpose may upset the whole plan of our life. It is easier in mid-ocean to vary the course of the ship than to change the cargo. A ship is uh, compared to your purpose in life, or actually your life, essentially. Okay. Uh, how many people do you know that uh, they, you know, and I'm talking about people who are 30s, 40s, even 50s, and um, They've spent a lot of time doing something and they consider it to be their purpose. It gave them fulfillment, gave them a sense of contentment. And then, um, you know, some things change. Who knows? Uh, life, life offers all sorts of interruptions. We've talked about that in previous videos. And then you begin to question things. And you wonder, maybe I should be doing something different. When, when you spent, already spent a lot of time forging a path and working on a purpose, I think purpose is deeply rooted in servitude. So your purpose is probably something that's not only beneficial for you, but beneficial for others, which is why it brings a sense of peace and contentment and fulfillment within yourself, which is what makes you happier. But the problem is, is emotions and feelings, they come and go. And uh, because they vacillate so much, you can't rely upon them to be true indicators of what is right and what is wrong, what is true and what is not. Okay? so. So what happens is, is when the, the feelings wax and wane and they, they wane a little too much and you begin to question, um, maybe I, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. In some cases, you might be right. There are some things that you just, you know, that, are not, that are not meant for you to do your whole, whole, your whole entire life. But your purpose, your purpose in life is rooted deeply within you. It's a part of the fabric of your soul. It's who you are. And it can translate to other things. But uh, some people will, will, if you've noticed that there are some people in life who will give up on something because they either grew bored or disenchanted with, some, with, with what they were doing, they became a completely different person. 
and that person ends up being less of a person than they were before. You know what I'm talking about? There are, there are people that have a certain amount of appeal and charisma because they, you can tell they're living with purpose. You can tell that what they're doing is, is uh, meaningful and translates to, to that very same thing for other people. But then they give up on it, they walk away, and they kind of corrupt themselves. And you don't really want to do that. And that's kind of what this quote is saying here. It's greater to mistake in it's it's a greater mistake to err in purpose, in aim, in principle, than in our method of attaining them. So you have you have an aim, you have a purpose, but a lot of times people will, will either totally abandon that, they'll jump ship, or they'll give up on you know altogether. And he says it's a big mistake to do that. It's a big mistake to do that, uh, and it's less of a mistake to err in your method of attaining them. So he says the method may readily be modified, all right? So that's what you have to question, is how do you modify your method of of attaining what you want, uh, and and how do you modify the way you live out your purpose in life? You change your course, but you don't discard the cargo the cargo are all those things you've acquired all along the way. It could be family, friends, it could be good habits, it could, uh, it could be techniques, uh, it could be all sorts, whatever it is you have acquired and you have uh, involved yourself with over the years to get you where you are to create, to create purpose and fulfillment. A lot of people will discard all that to try something new because they're no longer enchanted with what they were doing, but that's a big mistake. So he says, it's the method may readily be modified to change the purpose may upset the whole plan of our life. I don't think I need to elaborate on that. He says, it is easier in mid-ocean to vary the course of the ship than to change the cargo. What I'm telling you here and what he's trying to convey here is that um, rather than discarding the good things that got you to where you are and um, and abandoning the ideals that were virtuous and um, and beneficial all along the way uh, don't abandon those things don't don't uh, don't discard them you know maybe maybe you let them sit there for a while and you appreciate them but um I've seen people do this over the course of my life, and you'll see as you get to be older, you know, especially as I've gotten old, closer to 50, you grow with people along the way, and you see people change over time, and they become less of a person than they were before because they forget who got them to where they were. They forget what got them to where they are. And, um, and so you don't want to do that. You, you'll be making a big mistake. Simply alter the course alter the course, change the direction the ship is moving. But don't forget what got you there to begin with. And, um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I hope this giving you some food for thought. I thought uh, this might be a good one since I'm sitting here on the water anyway. If it meant something to you, hit the thumbs up button. If you, you haven't subscribed, please do so and share this with somebody else. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.